Um, today is, uh, what's today? I don't know. Today is the 18th of August. Um, and it's 2.29 um, p.m. And I am recording this video because I felt like um, I need to get my story out there. My name is Ramika Hopkins, and I have large granule lymphocyte leukemia, which is a rare cancer. Um, um, I was diagnosed on the 3rd of January, 2018. Um, after a year of trying to figure out exactly what was wrong with me. I know I look a little rough. Um, I just had a lumbar puncture about, what, three or four days ago. And I am bedridden and I cannot move my head very much um, because I have excruciating pain. Um, some of the things that I've experienced over this journey is um, I've had a, a lot of fatigue. I went from being this able-bodied person i was an active duty i'm active duty air force um i was uh extremely fit i was in a gym you know six days a week i was bench pressing my own way to not being able to pick up my son i um started um feeling very fatigued i started dropping weight i know i don't look like i drop weight now but um i started dropping weight i dropped about 50 pounds so i went from like one 69 to 126 in about a matter of three or four months um um about six months into me getting sick i started having abdominal pain um and it was severe um doctors kept saying oh no you're just cool you're all right you just had a baby two years ago you're just catching up everything like that and um it was it was very disheartening to me because I was just like, no, there's something wrong with me because in my heart, I felt like there was something wrong with me. Um, and, I, and I kept telling them, there's something wrong. Like, I don't know what it is, but there's something wrong. So after about three hospitalizations um, over a span of what, two months, um, I think it was the 4th of June, the 26th of June, the 4th of July, and the 28th of July, which is, was the last hospital stay. And that hospital stay, I was in the hospital for 45 days. I got out of the hospital without a diagnosis. Um, they did everything from um, two bone marrow biopsies, flow cytometry charts, everything. I know th those those terms may not be um, um, in layman terms for most people or in normal English for most people. But um, hopefully, if you continue watching um, my journey... Um, you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, so I got out of the hospital without without a diagnosis. So um, that was uh, around August of 2017. Um, after the fifth, I think, oncologist, I just asked the oncologist to just please help me. Just help me. Something is wrong. I, I, I can't function. I'm... I'm I was this high functioning individual and um and now I'm in all of this pain. I'm I'm suffering. I can't do or be who I was. Um and he did. He listened to me. Um because nobody else would. They said, Oh well, you look fine, you look good, you know, and and then that was it. They stereotyped me my sickness based off of how I looked. Um, and so he went through this one test and the test came back positive, but he said cancer is not based off of an arbitrary number, um, but we're gonna base it off an arbitrary number, which means basically I didn't have enough cancer cells in my body, body to term, make it um, diagnose it as cancer, which doesn't make any sense to me when you say that you're being preemptive and you want um, to diagnose cancer early and then you say, well, you don't have enough cancer cells to make it cancer. Um, so, um, after that, um, I started researching it on my own. They called it large granule lymphocyte proliferation disorder. That doesn't exist. I laugh about it now. My doctor made it up, whatever it is, but, um, that did not exist. That is not a, 
a actual disorder. Um, so I found a doctor that discovered the um, mutation of the um, now known as large granular lymphocyte proliferation, um, not large granular lymphocyte um, uh, leukemia. Um, T cell large granular lymphocyte leukemia is what they call it. Um, I um, reached out to that doctor, the research center, and they said, hey, come up here. Let's do some research on you. Let's see if you really have this. And so with the recommendation, the doctor that took the test and found the um, peak in my flow cytometry, um, I did. I flew to Virginia in November of 2017, and I got the panel um, test done for the LGL cancer that they thought I had and came out with again no diagnosis it was it was it was said that I highly likely had it um, and the reason being is because my blood work was not consistent um, one of the anomalies in my in my situation and in my story that is rare is is that my my blood work is not um, regulated. I go up and down in extreme fashions in blood work. My CBCs are never consistent. If you were to look at my um, blood work, it would look like it was a different person on any given day. And so because it wasn't consistent and there was no pattern, there was no way to diagnose me. But um, due to the test being um, um, positive um, in the location that I came from, they were able to um, combine both tests and then diagnose me on the 3rd of January, 2018. So they diagnosed me with large granular lymphocyte leukemia in 2018. Um, during this time, I never um, um, thought about the fact that we never figured out exactly what was going on in my abdomen. Um, the stomach pain that I was having that originally brought me into the hospital. Um, I was supposed to have a biopsy. Um, my doctor opened me up. It was a bariatric doctor because no doctor would, would open me up because I was too much of a liability because they didn't know what was wrong with me. Um, and, um, and so he never got the biopsy. And so in my record, it said it where was the biopsy done and there was not. And so... Um, over a course of time, I had um, a CT after CT after CT that said that, that there was something wrong, that there could potentially be a neuroplastic mass or a lymphoma or um, my veins are twisted around each other, which was not normal and they had never seen it before. And so now I'm in search of a doctor that will do a laparotomy to try to save my life because the last scan I had said that if someone doesn't do something, then um, it can constrict and it'll cause the blood flow to my abdomen. So not only do I have a rare blood cancer that only 7,500 people in the world have, I also have possibly another cancer in my abdomen that no one is able to diagnose because um, no one will take the risk. I wrote to the National Institute of Undiagnosed Network um, because of the complexities of my case and because of the situation that I was in where um, doctors were giving up on me and, um, and they declined to um, investigate my case. So uh, me being active duty, an active duty member, um, my chain of command got involved in, and so now um, I'm in the process of going to Walter Reed um, for treatment and hopefully um, some type of remission or some type of um, help to get this cancer under control and to figure out exactly what's going on in my abdomen. Um, I know this was pretty long and I know um, it was kind of complex, but hopefully you guys continue to tune in. Um, right now, I'm feeling really bad because I had this lumbar puncture to see if the cancer is spread into my um spine but um hopefully i get better after this and i'll keep you guys updated um just please spread the word um just because you don't look sick doesn't mean that you're not sick cancer is not someone that's bald 
um, or um, has um, that's frail or um, that looks like they're sick, that's someone that's getting treatment that's in chemotherapy. I'm the face of cancer. I have cancer. Um, and so if a doctor tells you that, oh, well, you look fine, that doesn't mean that you are. I, I, I speak advocacy for everyone that is out there that, that knows something is wrong with them and no one is listening. Um, I go to um, support groups at Moffitt cancer center and I and I advocate for the the people that are there and telling them hey there there's a network of people that understand what you're you're going through I I advocate for the AYA program which is young adults and adolescents with cancer um and um you know and let them know hey there's people out there that are listening to you you know please don't give up because if I would have gave up I would have lost my life and so um, this is my story, and hopefully you continue to tune in. I'm Ramika Hopkins, and I have cancer.